Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Fish Den 365. Today it's all about night fishing topwater lures for stripers. That's what I'm talking about. So last week in my video we talked about night fishing, the where, the why, the when how to do those things, when night fishing is good, where to expect it to be good. Today we're going to talk about much more of the how and we're going to go into detail for how to catch stripers and hybrid stripers at night using top waters. So recently my son and I were out at Lake Wall Paul Pack and we did some striper fishing. It was a Sunday night. It was the Sunday before Memorial Day. So when we got out there it was around 10, 10.30 at night and it, you might imagine that that weekend is a crowded weekend and on Lake Wall and Paul Pack it's very crowded and it was that particular night. And so it was a bit frustrating because we had a lot of people out there, some who knew what they were doing while they were fishing and others who didn't. Uh, you usually can tell those, uh, the ones who are not sure what they're doing is usually they're out there in their boats and they have a, a high beam light, usually some type of very strong headlamp or some type of extremely strong light and they tend to shine it on the shore and, and uh, so anyway we were fishing and we got onto a point that typically has some good fish on it but there were some guys that were fishing nearby and they had one of these high beam lights and they were shining it all over they were shining it on the bank they were shining it in our faces they, they just they were very insecure about what was in front of them in the dark and if you're not used to night fishing then I suppose sometimes you might get into this mode where you have to have a light for everything and that's just what you don't want to do because that'll turn the fishing off and it certainly turns the other fishermen off as well because we couldn't see what the heck we were doing because we kept getting blinded by these people's lights. So we stayed on that point for a little bit and soon left. We hit another point that uh, tends to be one of the ones that has been annually good for me. It doesn't get fished a lot. It doesn't have a ton of stripers on it but it usually has some and they're usually vulnerable for us to catch. So. We were out there and my son was throwing this. This is a Ripplin red fin, a cotton cordell Ripplin red fin. And you can see normally it would have three hooks on it right here. But we always take that middle hook off when we're fishing for stripers because this is, ends up being a topwater presentation or just barely subsurf. So I had my son throwing this out and just reeling it really slow so that it would just wiggle like a dying alewife um, over the surface. <clears throat> and I should take a moment now to, to mention that that's the bite that we were on. It was an alewife spawn at Lake Not uh, Wall and Paw Pack. So uh, this time of year in May and then throughout the month of June, throughout the month of June, there's this alewife spawn that takes place. It happens at night, usually starts around 10 o'clock, right after dark, and it will go right through the night to 3, 4 in the morning. And uh, this is when these fish become vulnerable. Uh, because the game fish are eating the alewives and you can hear them. So just to give you a little bit of a, an idea about why that is an advantage to know that is back in the 70s the, the Lindners, Al and Ron Lindner, came up with a, uh, with a formula for catching fish, for fishing success. And that formula was F plus L plus P equals success. So F being the fish, knowing something about the nature of the fish, L being the location of the fish, because if you can't if you're throwing your bait where there are no fish you can't catch any so location is incredibly important and P is the presentation what you're using to catch the fish how you're presenting a bait to them so the neat thing about night fishing during the alewife spawn is basically you have two of those two parts of that equation covered you know about the fish the stripers that where we're fishing for and you know the location because all you have to do is, is go to some different areas, look for the alewives that are spawning and you'll hear them and see them on the surface. They make a circle on the surface. And then listen and look because if there's any stripers in the area that are feeding on them, they'll be blowing up on them. And you'll hear this douche, you know, every time a, f a fish blows up on some of this bait. So that takes the fish and the location factor out of the equation. You know the fish, you know the location. It just comes down to presentation. So once you have those two out of the way, fish and location, now all it comes down to is coming up with a presentation that's going to catch them. That's the advantage of fishing at night. That's the advantage of using this alewife spawn to catch big stripers. So my son was using a Ripplin red fin with the middle hook taken off. 
using it as a top water bait. I was throwing what I consider to be one of the best top water striper fishing lures of all time. This is called a Cordell Redfin, made by the same company. And I put, uh, this is, these are both Smoky Joe color baits. That's what the name of the color is Smoky Joe. And you can see I put a little bit of a reflective decal on here just to catch a little bit of the light at night. Sometimes that'll add to the shine and, and maybe it works to, to generate some more strikes. Maybe it doesn't. But, and I also put some eyes on this lure. You can see I put some eyes on the bait. It's more of a confidence thing, I think, for me than anything else. But uh, so my son got one. He started off with a hybrid striper that might have been five pounds or so. And then a little while later, I caught a hybrid on this bait. But it was so crowded that night, it was actually hard to get into spots where, uh, where the fish were and, and not be disturbed by other fishermen. So it was fortunate that we got onto that point because no one was on it. I don't think it's really known very well as a striper point, but the hybrids get on there and, and sometimes the purebreds do too. So at least we were able to, to pull out a couple of hybrids that, on that particular night, which was Sunday. The next day, my son had to go back to college, Monday, Memorial Day, but I stayed up at Possum Lodge, which is just 20 minutes from Lake Walmpaw Pack, and uh, went out again on Monday night. And uh, I, uh, it was much better Monday night because most of the folks by the time I got to the lake had gone home. So I was on the lake around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock, and uh, started fishing some different points. There were some fish working here and there. I heard them biting. And I started throwing the red fin, and uh, I had a couple of blow-ups on the back of the bait. They didn't take it. Um, they blew up behind the bait. So there was you know, a little bit of frustration there because I couldn't get the fish to fully commit. So I tried some other areas, and uh, I ended up catching two, stripe, two uh, hybrid stripers that night um, on, on this bait. Both of them were on the red fin. And they were about the same size as the night before, but I was, what was missing was some of the bigger purebreds. So uh, near the end of the evening, as it was getting closer to uh, 2 o'clock, I went to another spot, another uh, point on the lake, and started throwing this bait. And I had a gigantic striper come up and just blow up on the bait. This bait was probably uh, a good 30 or 40 feet away from me in the water. And this striper was one of the best topwater hits I ever had. It, it blew up so hard on the bait that I could hear the water coming back down right in front of me, landing on the boat after the fish blew up. So I got this fish on this bait and I'm, and I'm um, fighting him and he's just taking drag and, and uh, I fought him for a little bit. I could see him up on the surface so I knew he was a 20 pound class fish, uh, but he ended up pulling off and didn't uh, do anything wrong. The hooks, nothing failed. The line was fine. The hooks were fine. He just came off. So he probably didn't have the bait very well in his mouth. And uh, so I went another night, a second night without catching a purebred striper because that was my only opportunity to catch that striper. So uh, when it was time to come in, I came into the uh, boat launch and uh, I, I bumped into somebody there that uh, was out also fishing for stripers and asked how they did and we exchanged, you know, how we did. And he had a number of blow ups and he caught some uh, purebreds and one he had in his live well and it was 16 pounds. And uh, he told me he caught it on a Zara Spook. So that's a really well known top water lure. And it's a cigar shaped lure that you walk the dog with. The bait goes, it sachets back and forth like this. And uh, so I like fishing that type of wood fishing. Um, uh, in the past, I've fished that way for stripers with some success, but not very consistent. For me, the red fin seemed to work better, especially down at Lake Nakamixon. But he said he had a number of blow ups. So I asked him, you know, what was he doing? What kind of cadence? Was he doing one, two, and stop? One, two, three, stop? And he said, no. He said, you just keep it coming. Just keep the cadence going the whole time. So I, you know, you, you're never too seasoned an angler to learn something about uh, what's going on in any particular time at a, at a fishery. And so I took that knowledge with me the next night. So I came out the third night, which was Tuesday night. And, uh, I thought, well, I'll just throw a Zara Spook. Well, <laughs> I thought I brought a Zara Spook, and I thought I brought some Sammy's, which is a, uh, a Lucky Craft bait that's shaped a little bit like a banana that works just like a Zara Spook, but it's got actually more of a bait, ship, bait fish shape to it. Looking through my box, I don't have either one of those baits. I was not prepared very well. I was in a hurry when we got this trip together, and I didn't have a Spook or a Sammy. But I had something else that I could walk the dog with. And it was old reliable here. You've seen me, if you've watched my videos, you've seen that I've done a number of videos on this bait. 
um, which is a Norman top dollar, and it really looks, it's shaped just like the Alewives. It's about the same size as the Alewives. So I thought, well, I'll make sure that I throw this bait some on Tuesday night and see what I can do with it. So Tuesday night comes, and, it, and Tuesday it rained all day, um, but fortunately around 9 o'clock the rain subsided and it looked like it was going to stay dry, uh, even though it was cloudy. So it was nice and dark, the, the moon was not out, and uh, so that usually, and it was humid, and that usually sets up good for topwater fishing. So I was uh, looking forward to having an opportunity to catch the fish. And uh, so I started out uh, using the red fin and uh, was throwing this quite a bit. I had a bunch of lures that I took with me. I had the red fin, I had um, the rippling red fin that my son used. Here's another rippling red fin with only two hooks, but I also modified it where I took the rattles out of it. So this is even lighter, it floats on the surface even better. And you can see I put eyes on this one too. So I had this one along. Here's another Cordell lure called a blue striper that is known to be a striper killer. I had this thing with me. I fished this bait too. I fished this for a while. This was this is a Bagley, uh, a Bagley spinner shad. Uh, something they don't make anymore, but you can find them on eBay. And you can you know the spinner spins. You can rip this across the surface, and it makes a a good ripping, gurgling sound. Again, it's shaped like those alewives quite nicely. They did not want this, by the way, that night. I could not get anything to even come close to this bait. So this was not the deal. Also had this, a Storm Thin Fin, which uh, demands further experimentation because I only threw it a few times. It's really not a true topwater lure. You can, you can, it, it floats at rest, but as soon as you start reeling it in, it goes under. But it has this really uh, crazy action to it, and it really does resemble the way the alewives swim. So when there's a, a bite underwater, I think this bait could be very good. So I had a couple of blow-ups on the red fin, you know, and the fish were, they were very active. They were blowing up with the bait, and uh, I was getting frustrated because I could not get them to commit. And I tried the red fin, I tried the blue striper, and I, I mentioned I tried this bait. And uh, so I was saving this one. And, uh, you know, so about 40, 40 minutes into the night, I, I put this guy on. And uh, right away, I started getting hits uh, behind the bait, which told me the fish were at least interested in it. And uh, I started to make the, my retrieve more and more subtle. I, I remembered what the guy told me the night before, a steady cadence, just coming in, not stop and go. So I was using a steady cadence. And what I found was when I started to slow that cadence down, uh, I started getting the fish to be more interested in it. And I caught a hybrid uh, when I did that. And then uh, I started putting uh, more pieces of the puzzle together where I changed the cadence where I would slow it down even more and just pop, pop, pop. So the bait was going very slowly like this and it would, you know, this thing leaves a little bit of a bubble trail. When I did that, every third cast I had a fish blowing up. I mean, it was, it was, it was like someone flipped a switch and I, I played with it. I, you know, I threw the other lures, I threw this and used a different cadence. They only wanted that cadence that I mentioned. So this is very important to remember because even when you know the fish and you're on the fish, you know the location, sometimes the presentation is just this minute detail, this little thing that you have to pick up on. This is the art. We talk about the science, the art and science of fishing. This is part of the art to, to be aware, you know, use the science to be aware, but then the art is to figure out um, the little detail that makes a difference. And that night I did. I ended up getting a 16 pound striper, a 14 pound striper, I had a couple that got off. One um, took me down into some rocks because he was right against the bank and he actually tore my snap apart. That one was probably a 20 pounder, or at least it felt like it. Um, I had a couple more hybrids that, uh, that I had. Um, it was just a, a really good night and it was a lot of fun because I, f you know, I figured out the cadence that those fish wanted. And uh, I'm not saying that this same cadence would work tonight. It might, I, th I think it would, but it might not. But each night you're out there, you kind of have to figure that out. But man, did it give me a whole lot more confidence in throwing this uh, a bait that I already had a ton of confidence in, this Norman Top Dollar. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the main um, gist of what I want to get across today in this video is, is um, you know, even if you have the location and you know what fish, you know where the fish are, 
you still have to figure out that presentation. Sometimes it's easy, you know, they'll hit whatever, you know, they, they might hit 10 different cadences that I use on this. Other times it's gotta be a very detailed, precise type of presentation. The cadence has to be just what they want, but if you find it and you repeat it, you're gonna get repeat strikes and repeat opportunities to catch some of the most fun fish there are in fresh water. Stripers, I just love catching them. I love that top water explosion when they, when they blow up on a bait and the first thing they do is take off. It's just an adrenaline rush. And uh, so I hope you get to experience that in your fishing. And right now's the time, the rest of June, um, up there, this, this bite is going to be on for, the, for another month at least, maybe a little longer. So get out there and, and try it. You know, it's not just, well, in Paul Pack, this bite happens at Beltsville, it happens at Blue Marsh, it happens at Nakamixon. Anywhere you have alewives and stripers or hybrid stripers, this is a nighttime activity and uh, you can, Raystown is another lake that this happens on and uh, it's just a lot of fun. So I hope you've gotten something good out of this video. If you did, give me the thumbs up. I always enjoy getting that. Subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that bell. You'll get a notification for when the next video is coming out. The next video I do, I'm gonna be showing a, a modification to a Zara Spook, something that makes the Spook that much better and uh, it'll up your catch rate because the fish won't come off so easily. That'll be for the next video. Remember, we're certified, bassified, and may God bless your fishing endeavors.